Now, I'm sure you guys were all saying, what the heck am I doing here? So this is the last wrap up. We're not going to spend very long here, but I wanted to get, uh, get your opinion. So obviously we'll, we'll know when they're right later on very two straightforward questions. If you look out, what is your biggest worry or that you think that could be the biggest surprise this year or next year, 223, 224? What would be the biggest surprise? And sitting here today, if you had to choose just one place to put money, you know, uh, to work out, you can give me whatever parameter you want, where would it be? So as I, as I said, you don't, guys don't know how I promoted you. Four geniuses. Four geniuses, two questions. When did they get here? Yeah. <laughs> They're already right here. You know, it's interesting because it's a good question. What's the one thing? And I, I can't even answer a question like that. I really can't. Because I think the banks, the Japanese and the European banks, great answer. Really do. I like that. We've liked that, you know, in 2022. I mean, refiners, we've been all over this. I mean, it was kind of like almost a too easy call. I'd say it's one trick pony because it's working for a reason, yeah. right? So I agree with that. And that leads me to my answer, which is they're not one thing. And that's the difference now in what kind of what even Martin Armstrong was saying so eloquently, that you can't just buy and hold and think this is a 10-year plan for retirement anymore. So what's the one thing? There isn't one thing. The, what I kind of feel is you have to be so many more than one things and in things that you haven't been in before. And I mean, honestly, and I don't say this because I'm a CTA, but I think you know, people that do what I do will become more valuable in the future because you have to be long and short bonds. You have to be long and short a variety of currencies. You need to have exposure in commodities, energy, food, Ags, especially industrial metals. We want to talk about what's maybe one surprise. How about $5 copper over a course of a few weeks? Because there's no copper in Western warehouses. The swaps collapsed because all the speculators had bought the front month, ran copper up, and then when it became one of these things where, you know, the nickel debacle and then the Fed is tightening a lot, and all of a sudden all the speculators dumped their copper, all the swaps came into a, you know, a negative contango, meaning the front month was at a discount to the board, cost to carry as normal. Right? And given the rate of, given the levels of warehouse inventories in all of these metals, tin, copper, zinc, nickel, all four of them, I mean, historic lows and re nominally really low. So this market is out of touch with the supply demand thing to the point where I feel like some of these markets could even withstand a demand downturn in a recession because it's just no metal. So I don't, you know, I think it's all these answers. And I think that that's the thing that is really the differential now is that it is not one answer. Well, I want all of you, uh, you know, I, when you put a program like this together, 